is in many ways part of a typical childhood. Latching onto the local sports team, choosing its biggest star as your idol. And truth be told, if you're a boy growing up in Nebraska right now, there are probably few better guys to idolize than Rex Burkhead, an incredible star for the Huskers both on the field and in the classroom. But what if that typical childhood suddenly and tragically turns atypical? That's when you need your idol to become your friend. And for one young Huskers fan, that's exactly what Rex Burkhead has done. Here's Rick Pizzo. All right, here we go, big guy. Show me what you got. On a summer day in Atkinson, Nebraska, seven-year-old Jack Hoffman plays a game of catch with his father, wearing his prized possession. When Jack turned five, we took Jack to his first Husker game. This would have been September of 2010. Before that game, we bought him a Burkhead jersey, and he wore that to the game, and he wore it to school once in a while. And He'd always walk around with the Rex Burkhead jersey on. Who's Rex Burkhead? What the heck? My friend? What makes Rex your favorite football player? Um, that he cares about me. He wears his Team Jack bracelet on the games. Team Jack started as a loose affiliation of just family and friends here in Atkinson, Nebraska. But we bought it more just as a reminder to put on the wrist so that we wouldn't forget to keep praying for Jack. Jack needs those prayers because he has brain cancer. I remember when I had my first seizure. At first, in the morning, I woke up and then my mom asked me what I wanted for breakfast and I didn't say a thing. I said, Jack, are you sick? Do you need to go to the bathroom? And he would just kind of look at me like a, with a, almost a blank stare, like he wasn't really there. On that April day in 2011, Jack was rushed to this emergency room where his condition deteriorated. When I first looked at him, I didn't know if he was dead or alive. And uh, he... Uh, You know, I went just over to him and held his hand. And uh, I didn't think I'd ever see him alive again. That thought didn't just go through my mind, it was in my mind. Jack had a tumor deep in his brain. On May 20th, 2011, Jack underwent surgery. During the seven hour procedure, the doctor was only able to remove a small amount of the tumor. And afterwards, he delivered some grim news. He encouraged a second opinion, but his caveat was that if we get a second opinion, and that second opinion is that they think they could go after that brain tumor, he said, you need to know that your son may not wake up. My response was, I'll sit through a second neurosurgery, but I'm not sitting through a funeral. After consulting with top pediatric doctors in Boston, the Hoffmans elected to have a second brain surgery in October of 2011. Ordinarily, the start of football season in our family is a very exciting time. It was another start to the season for the Huskers, and we were just sick. We thought we're going to do all we can for Jack to enjoy his two, three weeks here in Nebraska. And so reaching out and trying to see Rex was kind of one of our bucket list uh, type activities. Andy reached out to Nebraska and asked if there was any way Jack could meet his favorite player before heading to surgery. Kind of all I knew was there's this family that's Nebraska fans coming in. One of their kids has an illness, and um, you know there's a possibility he doesn't have much time. And I was like, sure, you know, let's do this. Days later, the Hoffmans made the drive from Atkinson to Lincoln, and Jack got his wish. 
When I first met him, we had some lunch together. He's rocking his 22 jersey, so that was, you know, neat, neat thing to see. We got out on the field, and, you know, I could see it in his eyes. He was ready just to run across the field. At first, um, I said, race ya. And, and then we raced across the whole field and back. And guess who won? Me. When he got back to the north end zone, he was so excited, he thought he just beat Rex Burkhead in a foot race. This is one of the highest points in my life as a father. When we were in the locker room, Jack gave Rex some bracelets that said, Team Jack, pray. I have the bracelet on, you know, 24-7. The impact they had during the visit on me, um, you know, made me kind of realize, you know, this is, you know, a situation. I want to see, you know, how he progresses. That single meeting on September 15th was a turning point for our family. Three weeks later, in just two days before Jack's surgery, the Hoffman family watched from Boston as Nebraska trailed Ohio State by 21 points in the third quarter. I had the bracelet on my wrist and just knew, um, you know, to keep fighting because, you know, Jack's not going to stop fighting. You know, why should I quit? Martinez with Simon after him, dumps it off. Burke had a nice move. Burke had up the sideline. Touchdown! The voice in your head was telling me, hey, Jack would, you know, keep fighting, so I, I got to keep fighting too. Toss back to Burkhead. Legate, the fullback, throws another block. Burkhead down the sideline. Uh, we were doing no huddle. I mean, it was constant plays back to back to back. I could feel the strength, you know, from him and that inspiration inside of me and uh, that motivation just to keep moving forward. Then he goes to Burkhead. Finds a save inside the 10. Touchdown! Burkhead's two fourth quarter touchdowns helped lead the largest comeback in Nebraska football history. Two days later, Jack underwent successful surgery. After waking up, Andy's phone rang. When I was in the hospital, Rex gave me a call. He was um, at the game, he was thinking of me, and then he scored a touchdown. Rex is on the speakerphone. He tells Jack he helped inspire a comeback against Ohio State. Burkhead insisted his teammates meet Jack, so he invited the Hoffmans back to Lincoln for a bowl practice in late December. Brought Jack up in front of the team, kind of told him his situation and uh, my relationship, you know, with him, and um, you know, asked him if he wanted to break it out, and he was all for it. I remember them lifting me up, and then he told me to say Huskers on three. And then we counted three, and, and then we yelled Huskers. One, two, three. Huskers! <laughs> Good to meet you, buddy. Guys, right away, after practice, were asking me, hey, you got any of those Team Jack bands and stuff? So that was a neat deal. Jack still needs those prayers. In April of 2012, his tumor returned, and he immediately started a 60-week regimen of debilitating chemotherapy. On September 15th, Jack was feeling strong enough to make the trip to Memorial Stadium to cheer on the Huskers. Despite not playing in the game due to an injured knee, Rex and his teammates still gave Jack plenty to cheer about especially after the game. Big Jack. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? How you doing? Good. <laughs> Despite his injury, you ready? Let's go. Rex raced Jack down the Memorial Stadium turf the same way they did when they first met, one year ago to the day. I always tell people that not only do I want my son to grow up and be like Rex Burkhead, but I, as an adult male, think that I should try to be like Rex Burkhead. I wish I could do more. I, you know, I wish he could be cured and, you know, he was all good. That's not how it is, and they're going to keep battling. And I'm going to be right here with them.
Rex and Jack continue to communicate via text message and Skype, particularly when Jack is undergoing treatment. 11 days from now, Jack will have an MRI, his first since beginning chemo back in April. It will allow doctors to see whether or not his tumor has continued to grow.